scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Experience for us in Jesus' name. Can we lift our hands to heaven and ask the Lord for a very definite visitation tonight? The Bible says, for everyone that asketh, receiveth. Someone is praying. Familiarity, strength. As many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Someone is praying. For I were you, I will take a minute or two and just pray in the Spirit to prepare the soil of my heart that as His Word comes, it will fall on good ground. Someone pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we ask that you speak to our hearts tonight. We have come to be challenged. We have come to grow. We have come to ascend heights in the spirit so we can do more even for your glory. Therefore, we submit ourselves to the wisdom that only comes by your word, that only comes by your spirit. Our hearts are receptive. We pray that you speak and that the spirit of the living God will find unrestrained access tonight. To the glory of Jesus the Son. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Thank you. I was very inspired when I saw the theme for the conference, Audacious, and I thought to myself, um, I take my meetings very seriously. So I think and pray and wonder if the people really mean what they sent as a team generally. And so I was very inspired hearing Pastor give the charge because um, the topics like this are very they are deeper, like he said, than most people see. Um, I hope tonight that as I um, take my session that it will really challenge someone in the name of Jesus. Generally speaking, posits divine realities in a man he expects that the fullness of that experience will come on the strength of understanding. Hallelujah. For instance, the believer receives what you know as eternal life, the life of God, at the moment where you confess the Lordship of Jesus based on the authority of Scripture, you become a bona fide recipient of the life of God. But the experience of that life is based on on a thorough understanding first of God, his ways, are we together? And then the ability to walk in that experience. So you can find two people saved by the same Lord and Christ, recipients of the same quality of life, but their Christian experiences would differ sometimes east from the west. The difference is not in the quality of what they received, but that unraveling the riches that comes with that life depends on knowledge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is painful to know what should be and then not have the knowledge to step into the experience of it. 
This was the case of the man at the pool of Bethesda. He knew that there was potential for his healing. He knew that the resources for his healing were available. You see that? But there were gaps as far as the steps for his healing um, to be maximized were concerned. And just the gap of the absence of one man made something that could happen in one minute to linger for 38 years. When Jesus came and met him, the man said, I have no man. This is my only thing. I know where the water would be. I know what should happen when I get in there. But the last step, the absence of a man, prolonged a situation that could be solved within seconds, in fact. Hallelujah. And prolonged that situation and made it 38 years. I'm praying that in the name of Jesus, there will be the hearing of faith tonight and with it the walking of miracles. Amen and amen. Romans 15 and verse 4. Let's start from there. Romans 15 and verse 4. The Bible says, is, will media help us? Okay, thank you. Thank you, media. For whatsoever things were written before time, KJV, which is my preferred, if we have that, that would be fine. Otherwise, I'm okay with it. It says they were written before time. Thank you. Romans 15, 4. Thank you. For whatsoever things were written afore time, the Bible says they were written for our learning. Pay attention now. So that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might find hope. So Paul is speaking to the church in Rome and he's giving them a very important information that everything you see captured in scripture, that the intent behind it is that it should school you are we together it is for our learning these things were documented to help us learn to know god and even to understand his ways we'll be examining hebrews chapter 11 i'll be teaching on the school of faith the school of faith and let's call tonight part one the school of faith The believer's walk in life and destiny will always demand partnership with the invisible realm. God so designed that man will not be able to actualize destiny, fulfill purpose to God's expectation outside of his participation with the spirit realm. Hallelujah. In fact, the Bible acknowledges that man came from the spirit realm. Hallelujah. And so our walk on the earth, living and then fulfilling our destinies would always desire or demand that we have this awareness that it is in partnership with God, in partnership with the realm of the spirit that we ever succeed in this realm. This is very important. So let's look at Hebrews chapter 1. We'll read the first four verses, but then we'll start with the first two verses. May I request that we read together. Ready? One to read. Hebrews 11 and 1. Media, you can correct that back. It's 11 and 1. Media 11. Okay, thank you. One to read. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Uh -huh. The evidence of things not seen. Please read verse 1 again. One more time. The evidence of things not seen verse 2 for by it the elders obtained a good report so let's now read 3 and 4 verse 3 now through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear for it says, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and that by it he being dead, yet speaketh. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. A few things we have to learn about the character of faith from this scripture and the first thing the bible tells us is that faith is verse one 
the substance the word substance there means the tangibility the substance of things we can go back to verse 1 my dear media people the substance of things hoped for the substance of things hoped for then it also calls it the evidence of the things that are not seen so the bible describes faith number one in relation to things please follow carefully the first revelation of faith we see here from verse one is as a reality in connection to things the substance of things and the evidence of things now but when we go to verse 2 we see a very interesting addition that most people do not pay attention to the bible now tells you that in addition to things faith is also connected to a good report hallelujah so he's giving us an understanding about faith that faith has a twofold assignment number one it's assignment in connection to things and then number two it's connection to a good report the bible says by this faith the elders obtained so what the elders obtained were not just things beyond things they also obtained a good report bible faith does not stop at obtaining things that there is a higher layer are we together now to the economy of faith that at the end of your journey you should not just arrive at obtaining things you must have a good report so faith from this scripture immediately tells us that faith has two assignments number one to help the saints obtain their desires and then number two to help the saints to have a good report this is very powerful notice that most believers in our study or understanding of faith we limit the operation of faith to things and that is right but that is not enough are we together so the average believer understands faith with respect to its ability to obtain things and that is true because the bible leaves a provision for believers to use faith for instance the bible says what things soever ye desire it says when ye pray that you believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them so we know that there is a place for receiving things but the bible tells us that the whole process of faith should not just stop in obtaining things are we following now it then means that every time we study faith there are two things we should be looking for its ability to deliver things and its ability to bring the individuals to have a good report and hebrews goes further to let us know that there are some times that faith does not deliver things but it must always deliver a good report so in the workings of faith a good report is greater than obtaining things because when you study the entire discourse of all those who were called the elders some of them did not obtain things but the bible says all of them obtained a good report and yet it called them elders are we together now this is very important so everywhere we study faith we must seek to find desires actualized but then we must also seek to find where reports were established therein lies the disappointment of many believers because we have limited the understanding of faith to things and once we fail to obtain things through faith we feel disappointed and sometimes even we men of God we lack the ability to explain to people why they seem to have believed God but the end of their journey did not end up with getting things when you understand the way faith works you will know that getting things is a very is an inferior part of faith 
that a more superior approach to faith is obtaining a good report so by this understanding we see immediately that faith is a platform but faith is a journey hallelujah faith is a platform that helps the believer to obtain promises to actualize desires but that more than a platform faith is also a journey and that in that journey the end of it is not receiving things the end of it is having a testimony there is something the journey does not affect your hand it affects you your entire life listen if you get what i'm teaching you your christian experience will be solid and you will do things that only god can do are we together let's now look at verse 3 you will understand what i said hebrews 1 or hebrews 11 now verse 3 watch this through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of god so that the things that are he says that it did not come from the things that do appear verse 4 now verse 4 it says by faith watch this now abel offered unto god a more excellent sacrifice than cain watch this by which he obtained witness what did he obtain he did not obtain things that he was a righteous man this was the end of his journey for him faith was not a platform to receive things the, the first example are we together now The first example of faith in the Bible, the Bible says he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and that by it, even though he was dead, yet he speaks. That the journey of Abel did something to him. He never got anything physical, but he earned a place, a good report. Are we together now? and then you look at the next person very strangely verse 5 verse 5 now by faith the second example that the bible gives us is the man enoch enoch was translated so that he should not see death and was not because god had translated him and before his translation again what he had was not things he had a testimony this was his testimony that he pleased god example number three are we following tonight verse six please gives us the third example that without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh unto god must believe that he is and then he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him next verse please i want us to see the third example the third example is Noah. So are we following now? The first example is Abel, then Enoch, then Noah. It says by faith, Noah being warned of, of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, he prepared an ark to the saving of his house and by the which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness which is by faith noah now verse 8 now you see what happened with noah the bible says noah did not receive anything but he obtained a good report that he was a righteous man because when god warned him he moved with fear the first time from hebrews 11 we see promises and we see receiving and we see inheritance started with the man abraham are we together by faith abraham when he was called the bible says he went called into a place which he should go after he received one inheritance we now see obedience and then in fact the bible tells us it was not everything god promised abraham that he received on his soil in his life because the bible would tell us that this man did not obtain certain promises so bible faith is not limited to receiving things are, are we following the journey now that bible faith should not just stop in the realm of using it as a platform to receive things that faith is also the name given to the journey that affects you 
more than your receiving hallelujah many people are not strong and audacious because they have limited the operation of faith to only become a platform that helps them receive things so there is faith for reports and then to obtain promises let's look at hebrews 11 from verse 32 down to 35 this is very profound i'm being simple because i want everybody to follow along and what shall i say more for time will fail me to tell of gideon and barak watch this now and samson and jephthah of david also and samuel and of the prophets we're reading to 35 33 now who through faith watch all the things that faith accomplished subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness obtained promises stopped the mouth of lions 34 quenched the violence of fire escaped the edge of the sword out of weakness were made strong wax valiant in fight turn to flight the armies of the aliens now it switches dimensions in verse 35 women who received their dead to life again then he says others were tortured not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection you see that now in fact if we extend it to verse 36 it gives you a very 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 interesting perspective can we add that 36 verse 36 of hebrews 11. it says and others had the trial of cruel mockings and scourgings and so on and so forth look at these guys the bible is telling you that these people who went through scourging they were not receiving things they were obtaining reports and the Bible adds all of them and he calls them elders. And he says all of them manifested faith. That means if your faith just stops or is limited to receiving things, there is a dimension of God's design of faith that you may never step into. Are we together now? Praise the name of the Lord. I've listened to so many teachings about faith, blessed by them. But I think this limitation in our understanding of faith has affected our confidence and it has dampened our audacity. We're not able to face life because we have reduced faith only to the realm where it is a platform that helps us to obtain things. I wrote something here and I want you to listen and then write that there is faith as a school, a journey that helps you to know God in his various dimensions. There is faith as a school, a journey that helps you to know God in his various dimensions and then it gives you a noble report before God. There is faith as a school. There is faith as a journey and that at the end of that journey, it is not things that you receive. At the end of it, there is an an evolution that happens you are the one who is changed you see that now your confidence is affected your perspective is affected and then there is faith as a platform for making spiritual realities manifest i like second timothy verse 1 and 12 second timothy verse 1 and 12 here's what it says um it says but I know whom I have believed, 2 Timothy 1, 12. And I am persuaded, for I know whom I have believed. Is that in your Bible? And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Notice, he did not say I have believed. He said I know whom I have believed. The believing came later on, but my encounter, my intimacy, I am not just believing him, I know whom I have believed. Looks like what Jesus was discussing with the woman at the well. He said, ye worship what ye know not of. You are just worshiping as a ritual. But we have come into a place of intimacy where we know the God that we believe. Hallelujah. Job 13 and verse 15 says, though he slay me, Job is speaking, yet will I trust him. Not just yet will I receive from him. Job was a man of faith and he said, though he slay me, 
yet will I trust him. I'm telling you that faith is not always about receiving. Faith is also a tool that produces transformation, that helps the believer to know and become like God, that in the economy of God, receiving is the lesser part of faith. What faith does to you, the confidence it produces out of you, the experience of God he gives you, the report that you have before God is a more superior purpose to the whole subject of faith. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Everybody who begins his work with God, you see, when God begins to journey with you through seasons, you are called a man of faith, not by how many things you obtained, but the experiences that you went through and the reports that came out of those experiences. One of it, like Pastor shared, being a man of patience. That something about God you, should, you wouldn't have known otherwise. I like how the psalmist puts it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he never said you took me out. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He says, I will fear no evil. Fear was not something he came into that experience with. Or courage. He came in with fear. But something happened as he began to confront that situation. He learned God through that situation. And his conclusion and his report is that I have found out that this thing does not have as much power as it looked. Before I got into that situation. One of the ways God makes us courageous is to create a scenario where we stand before our fears for a long time long enough to deflate that fear and you will find out that it never really had the power it proposed to have so the believer generally uses faith for avoidance we use faith quickly to pray and say lord you are god i'm speaking your word may i never get into this situation this is what i want i describe it by faith and that is not right that is not wrong but i'm saying when god is dealing with you what he seeks to produce out of you a noble report will demand that faith for you does not just become a platform but that it becomes a school a school where you learn God experientially, you learn God pragmatically. There is something about God that only your tears can reveal. There is something about God that only the gift of pain in your life can reveal. This is an uncomfortable truth, but this is how people become champions in the spirit. Are we together now? So you get to a point where your focus is on the knowledge of God and the reports that you obtain before him. You care less about whether things appear or not. I will take time to teach about things. Faith was a platform to receive things. But I'm saying your Christian experience will be a plethora of disappointments. In fact, because of the many disappointments as a result of the absence of things, you will not pay attention to the transformation that is happening and the knowledge of God that you are now having in experience. Are we together? So for instance, I'm trusting God for a job and I've been told that if I believe the word and I speak the word, the cattle on a thousand hill belongs to the Lord. Is that true? God is called the father of spirits. He can manipulate every human spirit to work his purposes in my life. I agree. So in the place of prayer, your focus is things. In this case, the job. Your whole attention that means the end point of your faith as programmed by your understanding is that when a job arrives, God has shown himself as faithful. He has answered me. Are we together? But you do not know that the job is a lesser part of God's concern. There is something he wants to make out of your life. Are we together now? And while your attention is on the job, and now you trusted God and released your faith, sowed a seed, spoke the word, submitted your CV, and in trust that after two months, you will get the job. Now it's two years. The job has not come. And the devil manipulates your understanding to leave you disappointed. If they say those who have faith stand up, you will most likely not stand up. Because your parameter for measuring faith is the presence of things. You will not know that in, within in those two years God has worked patience within you God has worked contentment within you God has granted you the strength and the capacity to be able to look at good doors and still don't open them until you verify that God is the one that brought the door these are things that you cannot get just in a sermon 
there is a journey and God is saying that in his economy that journey is also called faith hallelujah so most believers measure faith based on the presence of things so if you say those who have faith usually the man with all due respect who has a car who has flashy clothes a good house things that attest to the fact that the word of god has worked while some members somewhere who may not have anything but a rich testimony that i have learned how to trust god in spite of my father's departure my mother's departure i had 20 naira by january and i'm still standing by december that person may not know that that is a nobler report before god are we together yeah so the one who has only had five members even after two years the man when he stands with someone who may have a lot more members generally our assessment will be that this one is doing better than this and his faith is working more than this but god has taught this man he has purified his desire the pressure of pleasing men is no longer there it was pruned out by teaching only five people for two years his pride was torn till he died are we learning who you become is more important to God than what you receive I will say it again in the dealing of men with God who you become that's why God uses every opportunity to partner with your expectation for your transformation in God's mind obtaining things is a lesser concern because he knows that if that transformation happens to you things the thing you even are looking for sometimes it can be because of your former version by the time you are transformed you will find out that what you were really praying for was unnecessary because your growth will now make it unnecessary you will soon find out that it was jealousy that created that prayer point not a necessity for your destiny you were just angry and envious and God will say rather than just giving you that he will keep fueling your continuation in the flesh so he will use the opportunity including the disappointment to grow you to a point where you will now from that purified self that purified version you will find out that you did not really have many prayer requests that long list was what flesh gave you so rather than answering it he transforms you and your transformation keeps knocking out those prayer requests you find out they were not requests in the first place do you understand what i've taught so far hmm. so that in god's dealings with men as far as faith is concerned his concern is not your hand receiving things because i can tell you when god begins to work with men usually because of the flesh and the nature of sin and its loss that are enshrined in our hearts, most of our desires are not with respect to him or his program. They are usually fueled from a standpoint of lust. And that does not mean we are bad. It just means that we are still frail in ourselves. So when God begins to walk with a man, his interest is not giving things. His interest is changing that man. Listen, this is very important because two believers or two persons, young people for instance, can start out their lives and after two years, one may not seem to have made the kind of progress that he desired. Are we together? And sometimes in church, if we are not careful, we bring people out of a very powerful training they are having with God. That this sister may not have anything physical. But then she's obtaining, she's on a journey that is giving her a good report. And sometimes we abort that journey in pursuit for things. Your transformation with God is of more value than the things you receive. Because many of the things that, that become the starting point for our, our manifesting faith, you see, when you know God, you will find out that most of those prayer points were unnecessary. hallelujah when I started my walk with God I started with zeal and passion because we were taught that faith gives things and it is true it remains true eternally so our concern with God was how to use faith 
to get out of this unfavorable condition we found ourselves as fast as possible the speed of that manifestation determined the strength of our faith so we thought so that means god if you can take me out of this poverty in one week translate me from one room to a a three-bedroom flat wipe my tears give me visa change my life these things are wonderful you see i mentioned visa and someone smiled are we together visa so usually when we study the subject of faith this is what i want what must i do to make it happen that is the scope of our study you see it doesn't matter what motivated the desire we just believe that faith is a magical instrument used to fulfill every desire it doesn't matter how it came so i want to go abroad whether it's the will of god or not that is none of my business i was told that faith can help me get a visa it can force someone at the other side of the counter to stamp my visa so i now begin to study okay i find speaking as part of the equation so i speak i find giving as part of the equation so i give i find coming to church as part of the equation so i come i find prophetic blessings i engage everything and now my expectation is to the roof i stand before the consular and i'm denied the visa and i cannot understand so what was i singing on sunday you are god alone from before time began you are on your throne you are in the visa office now you are god alone and right now and as if that is the end of it as soon as you get home you prophesied you dropped a seed and you expected one million to appear for your rent i was younger now i am old I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread and in the presence of your landlord your account is still empty and then you say god what is the name of what we are doing i have practiced everything i read in kenneth Hagin's book i listened to my pastor diligently i emptied my account just last week what are you doing to me oh god then as if that is not enough, your colleague just passes with a beautiful BMW or a Benz and says, ah, how are you? It's so good to see you after five years. What have you been up to now? Say, I'm trying to go out of this country. He says, well, I know you've always been a serious Christian right on campus. In fact, me, I just got born again two years ago. And thank God for your zeal. I'm sure God will do it. And he haunts you and leaves. And now I'm describing for you someone. Put yourself in the shoes of that someone you're kicking stones on your way home because you don't have your transport and you stand at home and say Lord am I really a man of faith and when you come to church and they say all those who are faith stand up your mind will tell you you would dare not stand up where is the car where is the visa and yet heaven is clapping for you and saying you are a champion there is a report you are building are we together now that the person who has a car and a house has an obvious reason to roll on the ground during worship but that you who may not have anything you are learning to trust god in the midst of pain and the name you called him even in the midst of your disappointed expectation you did not change that name you still called him faithful and true there is a report you are building many of you here administrators how do you write a report do you summarize a report a report is elaborate it takes a while you describe things the Bible says you are obtaining a good report so you find out that what made you cry last year if the landlord comes back you are still eating I'm going to call police and no problem you are, you are already you've been threatened with police that fear has gone away you tell the man please sit down we're all humans if you want take me to the police i'm still going it's not desperation it's growth something has happened to you that what what would have made you have this magical fear driven fast fear driven prayer that is not of faith there is a purification that has happened to you you get to a point where you say lord i trust you but i want you to know that if i have to walk out with my children and my luggage I will stand in the midst of the shame and I will still call you faithful. My description of you has now come as a result of conviction. 
I have an experience with you that is greater than things. And if everybody say, where is your evidence? I will tell him, search my spirit. Beyond my bank account. My evidence for knowing and trusting and walking with God. Listen, when your faith stops at the realm of things, it will affect your Christian life. I believe in things, so I'm coming there. We are just climbing the ladder gradually. That in walking with God, your attention must go beyond things. So many believers waste the journey of faith because the devil cheats them through their limited understanding. Where is the faithful God? By now you should have had a child. You were prayed for. Everything happened. You were prophesied upon. And now it's two years. It's five years. And you are so embarrassed, you don't know how to explain to people, so you stop going to church. Because that is a remedy. Because, and it's not your fault because the members come. Um, it's just it's out of concern. Is it that this your own God cannot answer? Or is it that you are not trusting? And sometimes, we men of God, with all due respect, we help again to deviate the people from the path that is correct that they are following because we say something must be wrong with your faith. But I'm showing you now that faith is number one the substance of things the evidence of things but number two it is a journey that leaves you obtaining a good report and that not all men in the bible obtain things but all men had good reports it says for by it the elders all of them there were promises there were people who died without receiving the promise Yet the Bible calls it faith. When you know this, ladies and gentlemen, certain scripture now, certain scriptures begin to make sense to you that our light affliction, which is but for a moment, hear this, walk it in us, not give it to us, walk it in us, a far more exceeding weight of glory that while we look at the things that are, we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen, for instance, your prayer request that the things that you are seeing are temporal, but that there is a nobler transformation. There is something else God is doing in you. Hallelujah. When I started ministry, one day they called me to go and raise a dead body. You know, this zeal and fire of faith. All things are possible. I'm goodness. I mean, we advocated that from the depth of our hearts. Now watch this. I remember getting into the mortuary and there were dead bodies. Which one am I going to raise? Because it's not just one or two. And you know how these dead bodies were already embalmed? So they took me to the one that I'm supposed to raise. I didn't know what part of that body I would lay my hands on because every part was like a stone. Which part do you lay hands on the head? All the scriptures I had read on resurrection filed into my spirit. In the name of Jesus, I decree, come back to life. Absolutely nothing happened. In the name of Jesus Christ, as a servant of the Lord Jesus, come back to life. Okay, what did I say wrong? When Jesus stood at the tomb of Lazarus, he called the name, what is the name of this guy who has died? So, 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 and so, back to life. Yet, in my mind, I thought I was failing. I did not know that I was growing. Is someone learning now? That I left that place not obtaining things, but there was a good report. Because what you do after disappointment is really what shows whether you believe God. What you do after the name you call God after your tears where you go to after everything fails so many believers leave church and they say you know what i've been there and my life has not changed what they mean is that i've not gotten the things that sometimes my lost has programmed as prayer request and we put pressure on men of god to say if you are really powerful let your god make the things that i've put on my prayer request come to pass immediately and so our measure of faith is the speed with which we tick those lists not just our transformation i'm showing you now that the nobler part of faith is not just obtaining things but what god is doing in you 
many years ago i preached a message called knowing god experientially and i taught that there is a dimension of god you will never know by theory you will have to pass through fire you will have to receive the gift of pain to know god in the midst of that the angel appears to a young virgin called mary and says you are favored i've studied mary's life I still do not know what looks like favor. You study her life from the day the angel met her till upper room. I don't see anything spectacular happening in the life of Mary that describes our idea of favor. Yet the Bible says she's not just favor, but highly. The next thing that follows that statement is a controversy and she's about to lose her husband. Suddenly her stomach is protruding and Joseph says, what is the meaning of this? You are a virgin? Yes. What happened? My stomach? I met an angel. I'm sincere. I'm telling you. This is an angel that appeared to me and he said the Holy Ghost will come upon me. Imagine telling your in-laws that kind of thing. It's better to keep quiet than even to sound stupid. You see, sometimes we think that these things are just parables. You think that Mary was just a quiet lady who just endured until the pregnancy came. The Bible says Joseph was planning to leave her in peace. He didn't want to embarrass her publicly, but he said, I can't take this. I'm on my way going. It took God intervening. How about other naysayers within the society? They will see her and say, highly favored, stupid woman. You better confess the rabbi or the scribe or the Pharisee. Better us, we are bad people, the whole society knows. You that has claimed you are a nice person, look at it now. In all of our madness, we did not have children out of wedlock. And yours now, you claim you're a woman of God and then she had to endure. The Bible says Mary kept these things to herself. And yet the Bible calls it highly favored. Ladies and gentlemen, based on your knowledge of favor in relation to things, what did she obtain? That the day she gave birth to Jesus, it was even an uncomfortable thing. And then after that, she hears that they are looking to kill all children from two years and below. What looks like favor in that story? I will tell you where the favor is. A day will come. People will call to the table of greatness. Those who have a kind of pain that only you have. And you will be the only one to be able to stand up. When you get to heaven, among the many ways we know Jesus, it's not just by the crown. The 20 and 4 elders also have crowns. But there is a scar that only one person has. That what is a basis for shame today will be what you will be proud of tomorrow. And the Bible calls it faith. Now faith is the substance of things the evidence of things we usually stop there so our mind is programmed towards things cars houses nothing wrong breakthrough increase and then the bible says more than things that there are times you may not get things but your attention must go to the report and the bible gives us an example the first three people had nothing to do with obtaining things abel Enoch, Noah, all of them obtained reports either as righteous people or whatever it is that happened to them. It's only when we get to Abraham that we now see that Abraham believed. We now see the word obedience. We see the word believe. We see the word receiving. And even for Abraham, it was not everything because the Bible says, in this shall all the families of the earth be blessed. He never saw that one. He died. He saw Isaac but he never saw the salvation that would come through him. How about the women who had the opportunity to experience life, but the Bible said they rejected deliverance because there was something nobler. The report was of greater essence to them than receiving things. They had the opportunity to use the power of the Holy Ghost to command deliverance, but they said, no, I'd rather be called a Matthias than to be called someone. They, they, they chose that report. This is a very hard teaching to accept. Huh? You see how it's affecting you now? What about my prayer request? I came with it. It's in my pocket. Leave it there. We are going to pray on it. There's nothing wrong with your prayer request. 
but that if your faith if your work with god is simply tied to the god who can be compelled by principles to respond to your prayer request there is a side of god you will not know and many good things that are happening in your life will be mistaken for evil you will call god unfaithful on many grounds whereas heaven is clapping for you because you are growing back to a statement that pastor made the first crusade that we went for as a ministry i'm not sure we're more than 50. we prayed and fasted god gave prophetic words we woke up with dreams almost every day you know how you pray to a point that you are dreaming every day and going for that crusade the crusade will start about five o'clock around two we're still on the way and the car spoiled there was no chance of even saying getting any car because we did not have money yet we're going to show them a god of signs and wonders in the crusade ground are we together i had asked the sound people to be on their way we agreed then for 150,000. believe me it was a very expensive amount go by faith we'll pay you before the end of the crusade so the guys were on their way there it took us singing and praying for that car to get back to life as soon as we arrived there true story our ladies had to climb the tree to plug firewood to make everybody was in every department worship team was also in welfare you cook and then you go and prepare to sing there's nothing like allocation of everybody was in every department if it's time to pray you pray if it's time to sing if they are not complete somebody you join them and sing no true story i was standing and shouting on that crusade ground the strange thing was miracles were happening and my sound people that i was owing 150,000, they were also there witnessing the power of god i preached with power i preached with grace where we were lodging the team we didn't have money to give even advance and we needed to go and greet the traditional ruler where is the god that can raise somebody out of a wheelchair what does it take to touch somebody's heart to help us for god's sake now the crusade was over and everybody was leaving no transport to convey the team back to zaria i had to negotiate with the driver and said i promise you by the time you get to zaria your money will be waiting for you there just use your money and buy fuel on the way finally after a lot of arguments he agreed now you imagine a preacher that was wearing suit two days before or a day before shouting on a crusade ground and then the next moment you are begging the person and say the, the unbelieving driver is now saying what kind of a confusing god are you serving yes sir i'm taking now time to share this with you to encourage you because we'll pray shortly and when they left i remember i needed recharge card then phone just came out i remember i was looking i said god you have to do a miracle where i'm going to get the recharge card to put in my phone i can't even remember what happened but i finally got recharge card i pleaded i said how do i do this because i needed i had to dismiss the whole team and stayed back so that they don't say a man of god came you preach and ran away the hotel bills were there we could not pay 150 the sound the sound people were angry they said what is this you mean even ten thousand? you cannot look for it to give us i had to call somebody who was my teacher before and beg him now not as a man of god to beg the person to say please can i find twenty thousand? Well, i can't remember how much i asked him for say faith say it again as soon as we returned the the long story is just a miracle let me not bore you but you can imagine how i came out of that situation then God gives an instruction and says, next year, go back again. For that same crusade, Abba God, my parents are alive. What is the meaning of this? Just because I chose to serve you? Wouldn't I have just gotten a job and lived a happy and a peaceful life? Go back again. And I said, all right. I escaped prison. I escaped all of these things. I was waiting for my scholarship so that I would pay the sound people. The thing was delayed. It didn't come. I didn't know how to beg them. Someone wrote a postdated check 
and gave they went back to kaduna to count to cash it he was he was uh, what they call the thing the dot checker eh? they reversed back from kaduna to zaria no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me this is not a special number for you now unknown to me i didn't realize that through those storms i was not obtaining things but there was a report hmm. there was a report how does god give you an instruction to go back again to that same place what of the pastors that walked with you that you could not even encourage them you know pastors from pfn to say thank you for helping us you just wave them and say may god help you we're all serving the lord and the next day you want the next year you want to call them again yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i start by fearing evil but i stare at evil and then for a long time it doesn't come close enough to hurt me and then i say what was the fear after all there are times you don't go out of the storm there are times the fourth man is there with you because the miracle is only appreciated in the storm if they threw the three hebrew boys and they suddenly found them outside the fire the testimony would not be notable it was the presence of the fourth man in the midst of the fire that caused nebuchadnezzar to write a decree are we together now to cut the long story short after that time i remember in the midst of my pain i went to the lord praying and saying thank you true story i said lord it is an honor for me to be able to serve you regardless what shame and what pain has followed it i am happy and honored to be called your servant a good report and i remember god spoke some things for me in that experience and said you will never beg for money for ministry again and you will never have to borrow money for ministry again that was the last time till jesus returns now it's easy for people to see what god has done today and what god is doing with all humility and just believe that all i did was just to open hebrews 11 saw it confessed it and then it worked no sir there is an experience with god your good report enhances your obtaining things because you have gotten to a point where having it or not having it does not change your disposition with god are we together one other time in my life where my focus now was on my growth and my relationship with God. It didn't matter to me again whether ministry grew or not. Honestly, not from a standpoint of carelessness. It was nobler for me to know Jesus, to love him, to live for him. Whether the nations knew me or not, whether I was a man of God accredited by men or not, that was no longer my concern. It was to know him, to love him, to serve him, and to see that I was in his will part time. When God got me to that point, he said something to me. He said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. The greatest results in my life started when my focus shifted from them to him. The greatest miracles in my life started when my focus shifted on the pressure of proving that I was anointed to being concerned about Jesus. If the man on the wheelchair is not healed, I'm sorry I did my best, you can go home, come back again. But if at the end of it I can love Jesus, when he sees that you have allowed faith as a journey, as a school, to build you, the end of your faith pursuit should not be it. It should be your transformation. You get to a point where it is true that you desire results. It is true that you want to obtain things, signs and wonders, prosperity and all of these things. But that you have come to a point where you are not embarrassed at all. Your greatest pain is not when you fail to obtain things. But that if for any reason you find out that your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ has been disturbed by anything, that becomes your concern. The Bible talks about Abel though dead yet speaketh. 
the bible talks about people who went through pain and tragedy at the end of job's life in the midst of all that happened the bible says he bowed down and he worshiped how do you worship when you are getting a report that your children just died your estate got destroyed some wind came to destroy your farm properties and that job cast himself upon the earth and worshiped god wants to bring you to a point where things do, doesn't become the object of your love and your worship and praise so if god gives me a car now by the way i've told you my other stories i'm sure that many of you have heard it in my teaching as we prepare to pray for many years even when god started blessing me God will not allow me move to a bigger house. God will not allow me buy the kind of car. I could buy any car that I wanted to. I would climb a bike. You can imagine. Service with a crowd of people and you hear the sound of a bike. You think they are dropping someone who came to church late. That was me. My suit was more expensive than the bike. It's not pride. It was not luck. God, what are you doing to me like this? I remember times when women would come together and come to meet me just as mothers concerned to know whether maybe there was something worrying me that I could not share with somebody. Immediately I start hearing, you know how women fellowship, maybe praise and watch, I know it's my house, they are now coming to. What is wrong? And I say, I'm fine. You are paying two bedroom flats for people, three bedroom flats for people, and here you are in one room. I would travel for ministrations with convoys driving me and return back home in one room. And I was proud of it. That was where, look, when you say you are a man of God, it's not just that you were ordained to ministry, that you have died to a point where you can live for Jesus. The truest description of a man of God is not just one who can preach. It's one who has so died, he has now come back, but not with his life again. That he lives to project the image of the Christ. Are we together? I remember for a long time one day honestly speaking i got concerned to and said god is it that i sin it if i've sinned against you i'm sorry the lord is gracious and compassionate what is my own sin that you cannot and god made a statement that time i remember he told me my house was not built yet and i sat down there people will bring cars and god will ask me to just pray for them bless them give them back the key to return you know how painful that is i know you can easily clap and say you love god you tried let somebody come to meet you and i'm not talking of a car that is almost dead Re serious car that will give god glory if you drive it and then you pray over it and give the person to go back and there you are seated sleep will not come the appetite to eat will not come and you say what is the name of what we are doing hallelujah and then people are hearing you are paying two bedroom flat it, it becomes believable to say are you sure this man isn't I doesn't this look like somebody who is doing something hallelujah I found out that most of the things I would have wanted as results I've never had to pray for them when I obtained that good report that good report became like a magnet it drew many things beyond the things i would have prayed for and i'm telling you this truthfully and honestly ladies and gentlemen i can tell you your becoming is greater than your receiving your becoming that conformity that confidence your true audacity comes in your encounter with god now on the strength of that the god you have known and you have encountered when he sends you you can stand and tell the sick be healed and you are not speaking and hoping you know him are we together your pain has revealed him your hunger has revealed him your desperation has revealed him you can believe him for anything anything i was honored to have pastor around during our conference when the Lord gave me the instruction and he said I want to do something through your life and he gave me that instruction to go and organize the conference there I don't even want to begin to tell you the bills this is an intelligent church you have an idea 
there are things if you don't know God, ba, don't try it. You will become not just an embarrassment to yourself, but a lesson to generations. That every time people want to teach on the punishment an individual receives for not knowing God well, you are the person who will be used. That is, that is a global risk. You destroy yourself and everybody who has invested trust in you. Hallelujah. Then the Lord allows us to put a program in a weekday in Europe. A weekday over 2,000 plus workers to feed them and then he says to not collect offering. No nothing. So when the Lord brought glory to his name and people were saying all those things, I threw away the phone and I was flat on the ground. That's your boy you once trained. Thank God for the honor of his service to you and to the kingdom. My becoming is of greater value to me than everything I have. So whatever I obtain or don't obtain, it is I cannot because something did not come into my life. Say, God, where are you? That language, I, I divorce myself from that language. My relationship with the Lord Jesus is greater than the arrival or the departure of things. When things coming or things living have no effect in you, on you, you have broken the power of Satan over your life. Because you see, Satan leverages on your disappointment. He uses the arrival or departure of things to try to describe God's faithfulness or otherwise. When you get to a point now where nothing that comes or nothing that goes affects your knowledge of God. Are we together? So someone is sick in the hospital, you reach out by faith and you lay your hands, believing that the God of heaven would heal the person. But that if you hear that the person has passed on to glory in the midst of your tears you say father i give you thanks not that you begin to ask and say god where are you you have failed me no in the midst of your pain you have grown with god to know that god loves you and in him there is no evil in him there is no shadow of turning or variableness that even when you cannot give a name to what is happening to you you can call God in the midst of it and say you are faithful. When that happens to you, you have gotten to a realm where you frustrate Satan for the rest of your life because there is nothing he can hold on to with you again. What is he going to use to say God has not been faithful? Oh, a child, you tell him I love God more than a child. A job, I love God more than a job. Now, when you are praying for a job or you are praying for a child, listen, the correct, and I'll round up with this. We'll pick it from there, hopefully tomorrow. The correct basis for wanting things is the desire to use them as a tool to reveal Jesus through your life. Did you get that now? When your pursuit and your desire becomes building your conviction from knowing him. Now, when you want a car, when you want great membership, when you want a great name, it is not because of the pressure of showing that the word is working. No, the word has been proven to work before your arrival and your experience is too small to negate the power of the word. Let God be true, he says, and all men liars. If I never get healed today, God is still a healer. My experience is too small to cancel out the integrity of the word that has been proven through the years. Are we together now? But now when I bow my knees and I say, God, heal the people. It is more than a man of God trying to look for defense for his anointing. I have, I have found out that it is a desire to be able to obtain this result so that the name of Jesus can be lifted. I'm showing you Bible faith that works. So when you write your request, Lord, give me twins. Lord, give me a house in my tama. Lord, give me a visa. Lord, give me another citizenship. Do you know the reason why you are confident that God will answer it? Because number one, you have so died that answering it or not answering it does not affect your relationship with Jesus. But then number two, you are saying, Lord, here is an opportunity that in answering this request, you are giving me an opportunity to allow your name to be lifted and exalted. You have come to a point in the spirit that the Bible calls faith. 
every desire in your life is not isolated from the revelation of Jesus now you can pray with confidence you can ask for the twins you can say father make me a kingdom billionaire and this is not just lost speaking and the only way to test whether it is lost speaking or not is that your disappointment does not affect your relationship so many people who say I am a man of faith in the body of Christ the truth is that when you vet it from the lens of this do you have the unashamedness to forgo things to obtain a good report and when you want to now obtain things is your desire and motive just to use them to show whether or not God is faithful God is faithful from the time your pocket is empty until it is filled with all the money in your life I, I, is somebody getting that now so when I pray for people whether to be healed or speaking over their life I help them understand that the answer to it is the the testimonies that they receive is beyond just an attestation that this is a man of God I bring them to a point where their requests and their desires are connected to kingdom come connected to the revelation of Jesus now I can pray with confidence Lord lift this woman Lord give this woman twins Lord make this person a millionaire and I will not pray it without with any apology I pray when I'm teaching about finance I teach it as if that's the only thing to be taught when I'm teaching about other aspects of the kingdom life because now I have brought the people to a point where their desires are now in in unison with God's will here's what the Bible says this is the confidence we have that when we ask anything according to his will we know that he hears us faith was never supposed to be an isolated platform to just receive things regardless whether it is connected to God's will or not you see that now so the the missing ingredient that we need to correct is number one that faith is beyond receiving things the nobler reason for faith is obtaining reports that your journey of faith the school of faith should help you at the end of your faith journey if all you show me is a car and a house i will not be very impressed at the end of your journey if i stand before you in the midst of the car in the midst of the result in the midst of the designers i should see you go on your knees and call a god that you have come to know through your pain a god whose name when you call is not just because a worshiper gave you that name to call your pain and your experience has brought conviction to you and upon the strength of that conviction when he commands you you say yes sir you will do audacious things and people will look at you you do not add up and they will say from whence is this confidence the confidence is beyond just confessing scripture believe me you have had an experience with God and shame died in that experience ego died in that experience lost died in that experience your passion is to see Jesus revealed so if God says move you are moving because you already died in the first place so whether an embarrassment happens happens or not your ego is not tied to it now you can believe God in truth now faith is let me wrap up the substance of things the evidence of things there was no guarantee in scripture that all the people called elders obtain things but this one thing the Bible said about them it says for by it verse 2 Go back with this scripture tonight. For by it, faith, not just as a platform to obtain things, as a journey and as a school. Verse 2. Please, media, give us verse 2. So we'll wrap up with verse 2. For by it, he says, the elders, the elders obtained. So whether the house comes or not, good report. Being called a patient person before God, being called a righteous man before God, being called a true Christian, being called one who loves Jesus regardless the vicissitudes of life is a nobler report before God. You see, when you have that, it will no longer be a do or die affair. The only do or die affair in your life will be your love and your pursuit for Jesus.
when this is brought and reintroduced back to the body of Christ I assure you we will see miracles in a way we have not seen before we will see prosperity this thing we call prosperity the truth is that many people have not truly handled kingdom wealth you are really wealthy to the degree to which you can give to the program of God without it affecting you for as long as you still fear giving you are not yet wealthy you see yes that you have experienced a level of overflow by the spirit of god that no amount of giving to the kingdom becomes a source of pain and makes you to lose sleep first because you love god but number two he has opened your eyes to see what others do not see hmm. we are going to pray for by it ladies and gentlemen we started our journey with god not obtaining things but obtaining a good report and that good report before God and before men has brought things things beyond our prayer request it has given me the confidence to believe God today the bit that we are doing for the kingdom and the privilege of serving him in whatever capacity he's chosen to bring us to and that he's taking us to my my highest desire is not to have things my highest desire is that I love him. The proof of faith for me is not the arrival of things expected. It's wonderful and we'll deal with that tomorrow. But the greatest proof of faith is if you find me knowing God and trusting him more today than I did yesterday, then I'm a man of faith. If I trust God at the same level today that I started this year with, my faith has not grown. It does not matter what else came so heaven treats the subject of faith by your growth and the confidence that is imparted to you based on the knowledge of God. And pastor shared something beautiful. Don't waste your pain. Don't waste your experiences. Don't allow the devil lie to you that your faith is not working. In the midst of the tears, rejoice because he is giving you an opportunity. You are in the school of the spirit obtaining a good report. I prayed for this person and he died. Focus on the report beyond the promise. I trusted by now, October, I should have gotten the job. Focus on the patience that has been built. Focus on the purifying of your hearts that has happened. It is still called faith. I trusted that the ministry would have moved, say, to her permanent site. I trusted that God would have multiplied membership. More money would have come. More members would have given. But it seems to not have happened focus on the report you have become a more spiritual you the you that does not cry anyhow again you used to waste your tears but now you know the value of your tears you only cry in his presence not before the devil that growth happened because faith built you is this a good place to pray this is how God trained us so the subject of shame and ego died in the journey what do people say? Ah, that one, that, that burden I was delivered from it years ago. You do things because you fear the Lord, because of a sense of conscience and posterity. Is someone learning? Yeah. So that way you can trust God for grace. If God says, empty your account and bring it and drop it at the feet of the man of God, he will not be casting his voice because of lust. I cast that voice. It can't be God. God cannot be telling me this by October. He said, God doesn't work like that. He's love. You have so died that all you have belongs to him. As a man of God, after 10 years, pastoring five members, you would teach them with that zeal and not vent your anger upon them because of the absence of growth. You are teaching them with passion and they are wondering where you are getting this passion from. And you say, I learned it from Jesus. Whether he was speaking to one woman at the well or he was speaking to the Pharisee, he was speaking on a crusade ground. His passion never changed. To him, he was doing ministry. His reputation was a, was a list of his concern. The will of God was his primary purpose. So John 3.16 came out of a discussion with one man. The whole template of worship that has guided the church was not a discussion on a crusade ground. It was Jesus discussing with one woman. Many of the powerful scriptures in the Bible did not come from him talking with a crowd. He was talking with individuals. 
fez. Bible fez. I hope this is a good way to start a conference that you have so desired and labored and opened up your heart for. So that every other addition that comes to this conference falls upon a heart that already understands God's intent. That any conference, every prophetic word you'll be receiving every principle you'll be learning whether in business I be, I, I've, I've seen you know the, the, the plethora of seasoned visionary men of God who will be standing upon this altar all through the week have this at the back of your mind that the assignment of a man of God is not to endorse the loss that is already there so the spirit of God is beginning with us and bringing that circumcision in our hearts from tonight to help us understand that faith is not just as a tool to manipulate God using scripture so that our will and our desire be met by all means. That is not faith. The primary assignment of faith is to help you obtain a good report, a standing, building character, helping your understanding in the spirit. And then from that standpoint, he now teaches you how to obtain promises with respect to making those promises a tool fulfilling his will. That way, you can ask for the car, you can ask for the house, you can ask for the children, and it is not lost because it is not just to satisfy your desire. It comes into your life as a tool to help you reveal Jesus. When you say, Lord, give me one billion, he looks at you and he's not constrained to give you because he knows that everything that comes into your heart and your hand is falling upon a life that is ever committed to seeing him revealed at that point you will see signs and wonders indeed you will see dimensions of grace you will see levels of power you will see favor influence prosperity beyond your imagination men will look at you and not they will try to search how is this result happening and you will tell them this result is a product of an understanding that faith is not limited to obtaining things but it is that you have a good report. Your confidence is not from what God does or not. Your confidence is from who you become, whether God does it or doesn't do it. Please rise upon your feet. Can you hold hands with someone on your left and your right if you can? Let's just take a moment to just reflect for a minute. Thank you for your time. I want you to think in one minute. I know we're going to pray. But think in one minute about everything that I've shared. For some of you, it's a reorientation about faith that God is giving you right now. For many of you now, you are appreciating the journey that you started with the Lord from January till now, October. What you call disappointment that you are not even ashamed, you are ashamed of telling people, you are learning now that this has been your noblest year, spiritually speaking. In terms of obtaining things, not much may have happened, but that every sermon pastor preached. So this is what it was accomplishing in you. You already began to feel disappointed to say, I mean, come on, pastor is prophesying, people are testifying. How come I didn't have a chance to climb this altar? Because God doesn't just want you to have testimonies. To the testimony. You are the testimony yourself. A more patient you has emerged a more loving you has emerged a more spiritual you has emerged that it is not lost that drives you for a retreat now your retreat is fixed whether results come or not you can lock yourself for three days not just because you were threatened in the office that you'll be downsized pray a prayer in one minute father help me to love you beyond the things that manifest or otherwise in my life go ahead and pray go ahead and pray help me to love you bring me to that point and that plane in the spirit where my faith is built and centered around you not centered around things this is the school of faith lend me one minute we're praying that obtaining results or otherwise will never affect my relationship ironically it is this template that will bring you to a realm of fearful results or dashes strikes in the spirit you will do things that ordinary men are not able to do 
you will say things, you will do things that will surprise you and surprise many. Results that only God can produce will be wrought through your life because your focus is on Jesus, his kingdom, your growth more than the appearance of things. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now tomorrow by the grace of God during my session, we are going to be examining the other dimension of faith. And I trust that by the spirit I will be showing you something. A mystery that controls obtaining results in the spirit. Haven't established your heart. Make no mistakes about the importance of results in the life of the believer. I think I need to just take a minute to say this. So that your understanding is balanced to not think I am rejecting results. God is placing our hearts. John 15 and verse 8 says... Herein is my Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. John 15, 16 says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you go and bear much fruit and that your fruit should remain. Hallelujah. Yeah. The Bible says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had preordained that we should walk in them. But this is the correct protocol for, act, for accessing and approaching the subject of result. It is your heart being right first, Jesus being the center point, and then everything you obtain, you have it at the back of your mind that it must be used as a tool to glorify him. Now you can teach faith as a platform for obtaining and you can let the lead off you can teach it and stretch people knowing that it will not become a disaster you will not regret teaching them because their minds have been so fashioned to see jesus revealed i pray for you that god will help you in the name of jesus i stand in faith with the angel over this house and all the vessels of glory that are here represented and i speak over your life that in the name of jesus the lord himself will reposition your heart to a point and a plane in the spirit where your standing before God becomes of greater value than the arrival of things. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. And may the Lord bless you. May the Lord lift you. May the Lord cause you to see marvelous things in the workings of his hand in your life. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye